Okay, so this is the first tutorial, and it's just going to be kind of a basic overview of the app. Going to show you what some of the important buttons do and how to navigate through it. Uh, right now, we're just looking at the current loop editor. So this is the current loop that we will be working on. Right now, we have these five percussion tracks, and they are just the stock tracks that are created when you open up a new loop. If we scroll using the sidebar over here, we can scroll into the looper. Now this is all the other loops that have been created for this group. You can listen to them by tapping on them and mute them and you can bring up the properties of the loop by a long press. So in here you can kind of play with the uh, cutoff and the resonance and uh, you can use these down here to copy, edit, and delete it. Uh, there's a couple other things in here, but we won't worry about those for now. Uh, now, when we scroll one more time, we're in all of the, the members of this group. And right now it's just me. Uh, that's okay. I don't have many friends. So if you open up this, you can add your members or friends. We can search for them using this and close out with that. So this is our little action button for the members here. So... This open, that's uh, if we change it to a locked, then it's going to be just our friends who can propose loops to this group. If we set it to open, then anyone in the world can propose loops for this group, and uh, you can listen to them and see if you like them and accept them. If we use this sidebar again and scroll down, now we're in the songs. Right now this is just a garbage song that is throwaway. You open it up by tapping on it, and now we're looking at the loops. So instead of events for the track, we're looking at events for each loop. We have our loops from the looper earlier that we can now create a song with. Up here, we can change over to the song and hit play. And now we're looking at just playing the song. Add and take away loops, as you please. If you tap the over here, you can open up your loop properties again, where you can copy, edit, and delete, or play with the uh, cutoff and resonance. So, now let's scroll one more time, and we are back in our current loop editor. So, now let's uh, go over some of the buttons that you can get, that you can access when you're in here. So, by tapping on your track, you can open up the track properties. And right now we're just going to deal with these down here. So this far left, this is your instruments. You tap that and then you can change which instrument you have playing on this track. There's a whole bunch of instruments here which we can get into later. Right now we're just looking at the samples. If we open it back up, this is your piano grid. So if we tap that, now we have the whole 88 key piano where we can add different chords and melodies as we please. Right now it's just a kick drum, so nothing special here. Uh, if we go back, this is the effects that are applied to the track. And in this app, you can apply effects to each track individually, each loop individually, and the entire group. So right now we're just looking at the track effects. And this will adjust the note the volume and the balance for each individual note here let me give you an example so if we create some hi-hat events and we open that up now we can adjust each event together and the balance together or we can adjust them individually now to hide and show that we're going to open up this and press this guy right here that one will show and hide your events, uh, volume, and balance. So now let's get into some of the tools over here for this current loop. These are the loop tools. If we press this guy here, we can change our volume for the loop, as it says. And if we press this, this will be the, the playhead follower. So as we play, uh, the loop will scroll and you can follow along. This is going to be our loop effects. These are the effects applied to the entire loop. 
and this will be our fills so tap on that we can add slides we can add different chords we can also do uh, an alternating let's do every other here to give you an example remove these and boom you have a nice just steady hi-hat uh, go back into here we want to clear this so we open it back up and clear our fill that way we can just add single events again uh, this little ghost looking guy this is going to be show you the the events from other uh, loops in the group so we want to look at our strings this is handy if you are trying to match chords and, and whatnot let's open up our hat and the piano grid so we can see so these are the the strings loop the chords so if we want to match I mean I, that's kind of pointless to match but whatever so you get the idea uh, we can clear those make them go away or look at other ones uh, this is gonna yeah we've been over that uh, this right here this is our our live play piano it shows a hi-hat that was a poor choice but here we can play our whole 88 keys just as we like we can also record with this this is uh if we, we have to hit play in order to record we can we'll do that later but let's close that let's go back out uh, these down here, these are the note lengths. So if I want to create a full measure length of this kick drum, which is stupid, it will make a full length measure. So let's make it a sixteenth, and now we just get one sixteenth. Okay, now let's get into some more settings. If we press this guy over here, it'll open up these where we can adjust our our tempo so this is uh, the tempo for the entire group all of the loops will have to readjust to this tempo that you set and if you're the creator you can lock it or unlock it so other people can adjust it but if you create it and you feel it needs to be a certain tempo lock that thing up all right and now we come back into there and we can change our measures so if we change the measures for our current loop to two and now we have two measures in our current loop. Let's go back into there. Uh, these are going to be the effects for the entire group. Here we can zoom in and out. It's, uh, if you have a lot of tracks, this can be pretty handy to view them all at once. This will mute all the tracks at the same time if we're in the current loop. Uh, this can erase all the events. So I don't like that hi hat anyways. Let's go back into here. Our settings. So our adjusting the buffer size to a smaller buffer size will decrease your latency, which is the, the delay between when you press a key and when you hear the sound. But if you're getting a lot of pops and glitches, you may want to increase your buffer size. So uh, if we go back, this is uh, caching. It's set to default to just cache all the loops. It'll help improve performance. I recommend just leaving it like that. Um, that's about it for now. Uh, yeah, this will zoom in and zoom out uh, so you can get better precision with your events. If you want a real quick hi-hat, you know, just kind of zoom in and hit play. And there we go. Well, that's all I have for this basic intro. Uh, tune into the next one to get some more info. Thanks for watching. Bye.